Last season was definitely a roller coaster for QPR, uh, right up to the very end, in fact, with that Manchester City game. This year, hoping for a bit more of a monorail? Uh, I'm sure that, well, I'm not sure it's going to be that much more sedate, but I mean, that would suit QPR. Um, it's certain that their uh, aspirations have changed. And I think you only need to look uh, back a year of where QPR were just before um, the season was about to start. Their first year back in the Premier League after a long period out. There was a lot of excitement, but there was a lot of uncertainty as well. You had the takeover going on behind the scenes and Neil Warnock's position was um, under a little bit of of scrutiny before even the season had begun just because he was trying to trade players he didn't know if he could or not mm. and it turned out that obviously a, a difficult start to the season for QPR they weren't picking up points and it wasn't long before Warnock was replaced and Mark Hughes coming in was not necessarily an appointment that filled the, the QPR fans with a huge amount of joy but I, I think what, what scepticism they might have had about it is, has evaporated just because of the way in that latter run in the season um, not only did they get safety, albeit with a little bit of luck in the end, mm. but they got some scalps as well. And in, in beating the likes of uh, Arsenal and Liverpool, and obviously early on in the season they beat Chelsea as well, it made it an incredibly memorable and very emotional season for QPR. But it looks like there's been a change of emphasis. There's, they've bought very well. Um, they've bought players with a lot of Premier League um, comfort, if you like, that are very, very used to performing at that level. I think Parks are a fantastic signing for them. Um, and I, I think that you should see a steadier QPR this season. I don't think I'd do them any harm anyway. Do you think it's also now a bit more Mark Hughes' team? He's been able to choose the transfers this summer and, and, and start moulding it into something that's what he had in mind rather than just what he picked up in the middle of the season? Yeah, although obviously the first phase of the, the new coming transfers were, were happening in January with mm. some fairly big arrivals then. But I think that was the emphasis about who they could get that could just keep them up. Mm. Whereas now they're trying to you know, clearly trying to be a bit more ambitious. Junior Hoyler is going to be a, um, a player player that I think he'll hinge a lot of his, his team around now. Um, and I think that Ryan Nelson is an important addition because he's the kind of guy who, anybody who heard Harry Redknapp talking about him last season, it, it was like he was Paolo Maldini or something. I mean, not just for his, his defensive qualities that he obviously was raving about, but he spoke very, very highly about him as a man and about the kind of influence he has on a dressing room. Mm -hmm. These are steady characters that have come in. If you look at some of the, um, the players that QPR first identified when they first got promoted, Joey Barton, um, we all know uh, that he's going to have a, um, a start to the season where he's clearly not involved and it's up to him to try and get integrate himself back into the squad and the manager's thinking again whether or not he can is very much over to debate. Mm -hmm. But when you have characters of that ilk, also people like Gibral Cisse, Bobby Zamora that, that came in, these are some fairly um, interesting egos coming into your dressing room. Whereas I think people like... Nelson, Park and so on. There's a different level of professionalism and, and dedication that Hughes will expect that, and I think he'll hope will filter through to the other members of the squad.